What's up, guys? It's your boy Vipers here. Today, we're going to be doing another episode of The Gamer Takes, presented by. I don't have a sponsor, so, you know, it's whatever. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic that you guys vote on Twitter problems with the CWL, and we decide, I decided to pick get two players who do play competitively. Um, just, you know, so they know about the topic a lot more. Um, let them introduce them, themselves. All right, I'll go first. first. All right, um, Beanie Poop in the competitive scene since um, only the end of um actually Black Ops Four, about a quarter of it, and I uh, got introduced by my friend here, Aiden Accept, and um, might know him in the COD community, um, uh, Marcus Energize, and go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, uh, I'm Accept or Aiden Accept, uh. I play under As One Network, which is the primary team for AS1. We have two teams, and I've been playing competitively since Black Ops 3, but this is my first year playing in leagues. Nice. So it's kind of different, kind of new players on the market. I guess you guys are big um, COD World League fans. Um, just yeah. curious. Just to start off from Ely, you know, yeah, get you guys heart. Um, what is your favorite team in the uh, CWL at the moment? Optic. I've been an Optic fan since on uh, since seventh grade. I'm a senior now, but I've been an Optic fan since seventh grade since I first got into the scene. Um, I because I first got introduced to Call of Duty through uh, Marcus Energize. I went to middle school with him. Um, yeah, I don't know, I just, you know, it was just something to do, something fun to do. And I never thought I'd actually bring, I'd get a chance to actually compete like I do today. I'm really grateful that I can. So, Beanie, what's your favorite, um, Sid Real team at the moment? I... Um, I mean, it's the same thing as, um, Aiden's, but, like, for the first competitive scene that I have ever you know, watch before I watched Call of Duty. I used to watch a lot of um, CS CSGO and a lot of, you know, uh, highlights of that. So it got me really introduced into the competitive scene, like what's going on with like the games that I actually like. So then I started watching you know, like Black Ops, um, Black Ops 2 and Black Ops um, 3 and how, you know, they were playing it. So then I got a fan of Optic, same way with Aiden Except here. Uh, hey, it makes sense. I think you know Optic being in the scene since MW3 somewhere around MW2. MW2. Oh no, Black Black Ops One. Actually, Black, Black Ops yeah, One. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Black Ops One. Really old. I think kind of the fan base and today is kind of the topic of the problems with CWL and kind of just going with the future of it since you know since the franchise league has been announced back in February. Kind of let's talk about compare like this year's problem with the CWL. I know. Um, the games have been finishing up next Friday um, in about six days. The Studio Playoff Finals is going to be live in Miami. Wish I could have gone, but that's unfortunate. Yeah, Beanie Poo and I are actually um, going to that since we live in Florida. Oh, nice. Kind of. Is your first event? Yeah, from, yeah first uh, one for both, for both of us. Well, yeah. I think it's kind of interesting. I kind of want to go to one, but I think it's just kind of where next year I'm going to college. It's just schooling is going to affect it in a big way. Um, so kind of let's have let's start with a sub here. What is what has been the problem with the CWL this year, like in Black Ops Four specifically? Like, is there a main point that you kind of hate about it this season uh, compared to others, or the SOG, I think was. A real big problem this year. Um, they didn't they didn't really fix it until just now, and it still doesn't really compete with the other competitive weapons. But um, besides like just that, the SOG specifically, I think the uh, stem shot I think was a bit of a problem. Yeah, I think the thing with manual healing being into play kind of made it feel like it was a little bit too slow of a cut. I think you compare it to, let's say Black Ops 3, you go to the previous version, it's a lot faster. 
Um, I think well, you know, I think it's a really fast boots game compared to the other boots games. It's really fast. Yeah, I think in Stimma yeah, to I do think that. compared to we haven't had a boots to gr ground well. Besides the Treyarch title, the last boots to ground game you had was Black Ops Two. It was another really decently fast COD. So it was trying to again Black Ops Two was um, jetpacks and all that, so it was different. Yeah. Um, I, Bean, you have any kind of what was like? I think some problems with CVL this year. I'm kind of in. You kind of. Oh, sorry, I stopped. You kind of forgot the topic, but it's. I'm talk like when I said problem with CVL. I'm not mean like the weapons and that. A lot of times, I mean, like with the league overall, like the players, the pro league, and all that. Oh, sorry, I a think big it's problem. Oh, okay. Um, CWO. Actually, let on, go. Yeah, on Xbox, would be a lot. Like you know how it's you um played on PS4. A lot of more players are more consistent and more like you know teams pick up. Uh, a lot of more tournaments, um, online tournaments, and. Uh, CMGs on PS4, so like when you're on Xbox, it's just a really hard like maybe even easily like get a s scrim like just because you know the Xbox community yeah. is just really really lacking in how it went over the PS4. It's just crazy how like you know we'll be in the middle of the night just trying to find a scrim and we can't even because there's barely any people on Xbox that even plays anymore um, competitive like competitively in the scene. Moved over the PS4. Yeah, I think one thing I I felt like the last couple of years since the switch to the PS4, when they announced their Call of Duty World League and Black Ops 3, and they switched it to PS4, it's just kind of been a lack because a lot of these players who are coming up in Advanced War, you know, maybe who are coming up in Advanced Warfare, mm -hmm. um, as a kind of you know amateur, they played a lot more, and then they had. You know, had to pay for a new console. People didn't want to switch, and I kind of limited the scene a little bit. And it kind of really sucked. Maybe it did help the PS4 community because game yeah. passion, but the Xbox oh, is heck kind yeah. of lacking. Be yeah, the PS4 community is so big. No, uh, like, um, I know Beanie Pooh and I. We've been to a couple lands this year, and it's all played on PS4. So you know, it's like. Having to use like Cronuses to even use our Xbox controllers, or like personally, I had to I like bought a PS4 scuff and I just have to use a Cronus so that I'm used to that when we go to lands and stuff. Yeah, I yeah I think the thing with especially next um just if they did this in the past, okay, even if the tournaments were smaller for the CBL, um. I don't know what I was trying to say here, but if they had like Xbox support events, you know, for Activision, like they had that, even if it was once per year, there was a big championship, maybe 500 Ks, or like at least the amount that you can make prize money in. It doesn't, yeah. you know, like, you can focus on the PS4 side, but if there was at least like maybe one or two tournaments that had basically the like our Xbox based tournaments, they're, they're, they only allowed Xbox people. I think that would have probably kept the Xbox scene going. Now it's just we don't know what is going to be happening with crossplay. Um, if we'll see the competitive scene grow on Xbox. Well, also I think another um, thing with crossplay. I was reading something. Um, there they might not even. Um, it might just be like how PS or how Fortnite was when it first came out with crossplay. Um, there might only be able to be PC and, 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 uh, PS4, and then PC and Xbox, which I think would still, like, the, the scene would still be divided. No, I think they're planning to do Xbox and PS4. Um, I think, according to a lot of people, I think that's what I've heard. They, you have to have a PC friend to play PC, uh, against PC people. Oh. So we don't know how it's gonna be set up. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think I'm excited thing... for it. I think I still might want to switch to PS4 though, because I know the game's probably still gonna run better on PS4, even though it's gonna be crossplay. Just that's just how it's probably gonna work. Just like how it is now, it's the game runs better on PS4 versus Xbox. Yeah, probably makes sense. You get well, 
I don't know what next gen console is going to be, but one thing I really had a concern with this year's studio and the Black Story season is just how many of these, like, there was a lack of kind of big orgs in the scene to a kind of invest in. I, you know, especially how many orgs had to be shut down, were shut down, or had didn't pay their players this year. I, I can list like four of them. We got Midnight, Accelerate, yeah, oh yeah. Um, which will turn into Elevate. Um, Red Reserve, which um, got transferred to Phase, and then Denial. What, what do you kind of, why was that, why were la big orgs lacking to join the scene before the, you know, next year? Uh, I think it's just probably, like, people, I think COD is, you know, people have been saying this for years now, COD is a dying esport, and it really does suck, because this has been, you know, I've been playing this game since, what, since I was, like, six, maybe? It just really sucks to see it going downhill. Um, so I, I just think these bigger orgs are like, well, we're gonna have to pay these players, so what's the point if, you know, we're not gonna get much return? I think that was probably the thought process. Yeah, I totally play. agree with that. Um, but I think with franchising now, I think a lot more people are gonna watch. Like, uh... I, I'm not sure about how Overwatch was before they franchised, but I don't think there was a lot of I don't think it was that people people even watching like you know how because they didn't have teams it was just like org names yeah they didn't have like oh like the Dallas Fuel and and stuff like that so I think that's I think it's gonna transfer over and it's just gonna be more popular now. It makes sense, but it's just. How quick would it solve, especially with, maybe there was a concern with that. Maybe the reason Big Orcs didn't want to invest, kind of, you know, I think when the, I, I don't know when franchising the news group got into place. I think it was February. Yeah, um, I think that's when the rumor, oh, because so I So that know, was unfortunate timing, of... because you could apply, like, if they did that, just say, okay. Say they did at the Sun, they announced it for they were playing it for next year. Maybe you saw more big orgs, but they announced it at the wrong time. I think the only kind of known org that competed in the scene of franchising, you know, you know the team space roster, which was um, now Gen G. Yeah. That was the only known org that had franchising experience that invested. Yeah, I think. Also, I think like Gen G was like. Obviously, we have like our COD orgs like FaZe and Optic. And, I mean, they're in other esports, but they're known for COD, right? So I think Gen yeah. G was like that big, like first org to be. Oh, I'm gonna, we're gonna go into COD this year. And I think. Oh, and um, yes. G2 was trying to do that, but they got knocked out in the PLQ. I think we could see them back. Yeah, I think G2. I think will definitely. Come I back. think we could see a franchise spot in that. I think. If they want to invest in the Madrid spot, which could be hard because of heretics, they could invest in Berlin because that's kind of where the headquarters is in mm -hmm. Germany. They do have a scene there, but not big. Um, but it's just, will they do it? Well, they, it's just, do they want to spend that $25 million yeah. to do it? Um, kind of do it. What did you... Okay, so we're going to get back on the topic. I just kind of want to do... Not worry about franchise because that's going to be kind of be talked about later um, in the hour. But one thing I want to talk about is kind of the roster mania periods and the substitutes. That is this kind of new... This, um, roster mania that has existed for a while, but it it's not at specific times. Yeah. You know, roster mania last year kind of existed sometimes after a tournament just for a week you know just switch it up but this one they have like maybe a week and then the middle one that was about two weeks and then the last one that was four days what do you kind of think about those roster mini opinions being being that short especially for the last one that just happened um from june 17th to 20th um i thought i the one that happened in J june i think that's probably the craziest roster mini. I think that was the most amount of team changes um, during the event. Uh, or during the yeah, whole I'd... year. I think that was... Right? Am I, am I right saying that? I think that was like... 
I think that's like the it most. It was really odd. I think the Yells allowed them. I think it was finalizing the rosters. Yeah, I don't know. I thought, I thought the roster mania changes this year were, I think, pretty good. I thought the substitute spots was super weird though in the beginning of the year, but I understand why it was necessary. Um, because then, like you know, if it was, let's take like hundred thieves for example. Pharaoh just wasn't a good fit for the team, and then they got priest done. Now they're. It would have been back to back to back champs, but I think you know he yeah, got. Ford I don't remember he well. got sick. I don't know if yeah, you remember a that. Yeah, there. Otherwise, I think they would. Yeah, have they only had losers bracket too, especially going with they had losers in Fort Ward. Even if they went two and one in their pool, that was the crazy part about that one. Yeah, I thought <laughs> that was a pretty weird. Um, I, I don't know. I honestly, I think. The competitive scene this year has been pretty wacky. It, all in all, it's been yeah, weird. Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> um, there's a lot I, of. I think it's... Like, I think they probably. Go. I think the weirdest thing that happened all year was definitely what just happened, where they dropped Nogathin for Spacely, and then dropped Nog dropped Spacely for Nogathin again. I thought that was pretty weird on Gen G's part. I did not expect that to happen. Yeah. A lot yeah, of I thought I, I kind of think that was really odd. I think they mentioned in a podcast. I think from Lion Man, the card maker, they said they were they were. I think they were the only team that was. They were thinking they were the only team that did it right because they subbed in and out, and that was kind of what was. And to be honest, they were kind of. It was didn't feel right at some point because there was. There's a reason why you put space to the end because you wanted more slaying power. Nagafin wasn't doing good in the core, yeah. in the respawn modes, um, and also spacey still undefeated, only player undefeated. And search and destroy gets dropped twice, gets replaced twice. I felt like they were doing it right, testing the team chemistry, seeing how it was going, and maybe that's why they kept doing the substitute changes, even though yeah, it was pointless, I, just I, trying to get I, the teamwork on point. I feel like it was 100% not a, not a, um, what is it called, not a, you know, like, it was definitely like a chem problem with the team, why they didn't stay, why they placed him twice, maybe they just didn't play well together, that, that roster that they had was very good, especially like, when they had, with Havoc in, and Nagafin out for Spacely, that team, Looks like a really good competing team, but they. It was definitely just a chem thing. Because that, that's everything. You don't have good chem on a team, you can't stay together long. I think that's also a problem with Xbox COD, is mm -hmm. there's a lot of chem problems. A lot of people having egos when they shouldn't. And that, that's what breaks up teams, and Xbox anyway. That happens for everybody, I think, to be honest, and the lead to just... But, I don't know. It was I used to like, play or not perform, it's like really and it's problems. Yeah, exactly. I couldn't put my couldn't put it in the words. But that's been a thing. Or it's really bad, I think, in Xbox. I think, Tyler, how often do you think team changes happen? Oh. <laughs> every single every... week? Even, like, for, like, even, yeah. like, really good teams on Xbox, you wouldn't expect that to happen. It's like a team change. It's... It's not even like the org is taking, like, you know, uh, partaking into doing that either. It's usually just the people on the team that really doesn't feel like having that person on the team, whether it's, you know, yeah, captain on the team, whether it's, you know, just chemistry, maybe just does bad one game, dude. It's just insane. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I think, don't think, yeah. That's what separates, I think, AS1 a lot, though. Uh, that's the team we play for that, that doesn't happen a lot. Yeah. It's just kind of finding the group of people that work together and just. And that it was just shocking because. Problems. Well, that's gonna be the thing is, are they not gonna? They're gonna work the problems out. Just that they kind of bitch and they just kind of blame each other. All you need to do is just fix, just learn your mistakes, and sometimes people just don't want to. You know. They want to work on it. They want to find. Just have that. Good. They just Passion want to find good. a new team and hopefully. Alright. Yeah, I think just 
do they trust them enough? You know, do they trust them to fix their mistakes and that just causes a lot of those changes? Um and again, Wham's Wham's at the LG roster. Back in um you know, they won CDW four dwarf, which was just shocking because of their three and four record in league play the first split. Yeah. And then they just went to hell. I think everyone knew so I, I think everyone knew they needed to make a change. Except I, I think the org just wanted to keep everyone, like, I slacked and John should def- John slacked and- and Classic should have all gone, and they should have built a team around Gunless and Formal. But, I don't think they were just- I don't think the players were available at the time that they may have wanted. Maybe that's why they tried to work through it. Um... But, yeah, that- that Yeah, but they could have done it during the second roster period, which was a two-week period, if you knew. Yeah. They even struggled in the crossplay division. So I I don't get why they didn't do that. Like they didn't switch it up during the crossplay. Even if you won a tournament, if you're not feeling comf confident on a roster in Pro League, that's a concern. I think one substitute change that I never liked. This is I don't really the spacing out of the situation that one confused me, but the one for UIU at the start of the year. Oh yeah, that of one January. was crazy. I know I did not understand that at all. Cause that they, cause I that move was purely for, um, cause they wanted methods for you know so they could get more sponsors. Cause obviously methods is known in the community. The method is known in the community, so there was no other reason for him to, for them to drop that other than to get more sponsors. I don't yeah, know. I, I, I think everyone like disagreed with that that change. It didn't make sense because Spoof has never got an opportunity. You know, this is could have been his first time in the pro league. Mm -hmm. You know, last year for um, GJ Orange, he was they were one map away from um, being Tana Mines for that last spot. They were literally lost the game five search and destroy. They didn't make it into the pro league for um, stage two. Yeah. And then spoof to actually make it with that four and was it, I think five and four and three, five and two record, and to make it out when I'm to go into bracket, it did not make sense to drop him. I know Met now Methods hasn't looked that bad this year, um, but you know it, there could have been another player that if you were thinking about why you're gonna drop spoof, there could have been a player that was worse than that team that you got took the spot with. Yeah. I don't know. It, a, there's don't been know. a lot of really weird changes. Oh, let's take like, uh, like E6 for example, when they dropped Frosty. I think. What did they do? They. They got. Mayhem. They Brazil. they were placing like top six for most of the events, right? All tournaments did they? All they tournaments they top placed six. top six, they and they and they were still making they, changes. They made a change. I don't know. At one point, you you I think they just need to be like, okay, you know, there's there's something there's something wrong with the team, but like we're good enough to you know stay with the top dogs, and they were you know they were beating good teams, even like the event that they got um that Optic and E United got like top 16 and top 12, I think E6 got like top four of that event, and then they made a and roster they had top change. Six, like a Oh, they did that. Oh, uh, Chino did not want to be in the team. I think, to be honest, I don't oh, yeah. think Chino liked the situation, sort of, especially like with General. And General's undroppable since it's, it's his org. <laughs> yeah, Gen. Oh, yeah, dick suck your mom. I actually don't mention that, but kind of. Beanie, what do you kind of think? One move that you did not like overall. Just kind of this year. Just well, what move did you not like? I'm not really like you know into like deeply into this uh, in the CWL. Yeah, yeah, in the competitive scene because I only started to watch like the competitive scene. Don't really have to focus on. It. I like uh, how everything's hyped up and shit, so I watch that shit. So. I get. I bring my big man Aiden in here, and you know, got got the knowledge on board. So, 
you know, I'm here to fucking, you know, just, um, you know, agree, um, maybe even talk about some stuff that like, did happen that I knew. Like on of. Xbox, right? Yeah. He knows a lot more about the Xbox scene. I know. Yeah, probably go. I know. We, just, me, when you, okay, so when you when you watch the CWL, if you it doesn't matter how much time, and if you kind of knew any rosters that made changes, I'm not I'm not gonna go all the way back to probably January because it doesn't matter anymore. But just say the recent roster period, any move that kind of didn't make any sense, if you remember, if you know. I know. We, I, me and Ty were hanging out. We were talking about the. E6 thing, I think that's that's probably the only roster change he knows a lot about because we were talking about that most. Right, Tyler? Yeah, most yeah, likely. That, that yeah. one's. I think Mayhem had too much. I think Mayhem's not a bad addition. Um, I think I'm gonna be honest here. I think he performed a lot, lot better. I, I, I know why people like Frosty a lot because he has the championship mentality because of his Halo experience. But I yeah. just. I I don't know, he wasn't performing a type and then you just saw at midnight when he played for midnight this week, he looked like what the potential was. Which was shocking. Uh, yeah, I, would, I, had... cause I I like the Halo scene too. So obviously I I think it was like I only recently also got it into Halo, but Frosty obviously cause Optic when I think I got into Halo right when Optic dropped the Halo team actually. So I've, I've been a fan of talks, and so I obviously loved Frosty. He's my favorite Halo player. He's the greatest of all time. So it's you know it hurt to see that he was dropped from E6, but I'm excited to see him yeah. play on Midnight. Yeah, that's kind of sucks. Uh, kind of hoping I think one move that kind of worked out for E6 was God or X who. Has been on the amateur scene for a while, and now you just, you know, he wasn't there because he was stuck. You know, he stuck with Parasite, Pander, and Lacefield um, all yeah. last year. Um, but you know, he got the opportunity this year. He's he's performed really well for E6. Um, I I think they could have went for a better. It was just odd picking up Rezzy. I know he has the town skill. He looked impressive with Elevate. But he was not a grapple sog player. Yeah. And now he's got to learn a totally different role. You know, I I don't know who's gonna be in the market for grapple sog, but you could probably find someone better. Yeah, I don't. Know. I think the team that took probably the biggest dub though this roster change period was definitely LG getting Brack and Skies. That was, and they just look so good together. Just that team look is insane. So that was probably one, definitely almost the biggest hundred dev. Dev. Yeah, definitely the biggest. And being for being a brand new team as well. Um, that, that just kind of insane. I just looked impressive, especially I think one, I think kind of the problem with the CWL last year was it was based on region locks, where not you don't. Um, they they had pro points before the season, you know, two Ks yeah. and all that. You know, they didn't have a lot of these amateur players kind of show up that you kind of saw, like you know, Barack and Skies. They were amateurs last year, never heard of those names, and you know, now they're kind of big name players. Kind of, it's nice to see kind of them on the rise. They give them the opportunity. They performed at the PLQ. Now they're really well known players who do deserve who are gonna deserve bigger offers in the long run. Yeah, I think that was probably the best thing that happened this season was giving, you know, those those really good amateur players the opportunity to get into this scene. But with the rough, how rosters work this year, that's probably, you know, that made a, a lot like with like Spoof, like we were talking about, like that that just sucks for him. Like that was his opportunity, just like you know how the entire Midnight roster except. You know, Llama God, that was all their f first opportunity. And he got it taken away from him. Just because the orcs have too much power this year. Yeah, especially if you saw that it's just a 5 and 2 start by them and just went, just, you know, that was Midnight's fault. 
They could have yeah, released yeah. the contract. They could have just sold them out. You know you don't have enough money. It's, they were a top PLQ team. Maybe an or of or with Vestum that had money and then it never worked out. Um, overall. And then Brett got into two more shitty situations with orgs with Accelerate, or they didn't stay that long. And, um, Denial. Yeah. It was just unfortunate he didn't really get paid that- uh, he got, I didn't get paid by Accelerate, but he didn't get paid. Especially his town level, now he's getting paid by LG, so that was the good thing about it. But, I don't know how long it's gonna kind of- I don't know if we're gonna see a big wave of Amtrip. Maybe I think, especially with franchising next year, and probably having more substitutes on play, you could see a lot more Amtrip players on the scene. So, hopefully, it goes on the rise. Yeah, I hope it goes. I hope it's kind of like how Overwatch Contenders is, where you know there's gonna there's gonna be like you know like the AM scene is gonna be more populated. I hope it's like that, and then. Um, so if it's like that, then, you know, then these big orgs are, because I think how it's going to be is just like Overwatch. They're going to have a set amount of teams, and then what's going to happen is, uh, the bigger orgs are going to come into the scene and want to pick, want a spot in the, in the CDL. And they're going to pick up some, they're going to pick up contenders teams, or wh whatever they call it for the AMC next year. Um, I think contenders, a lot of times, the over, I think you compare it, the thing is, you're gonna nuts, like, if, I don't know if they're gonna have any big market teams invest into contenders, you don't know how shady, the, like, I think Overwatch contenders, they do have academy teams, uh, for some Overwatch teams, oh, yeah, that's I mean, what Montreal, is. Paris, yeah, yeah, academy team. um, I think the gladiators of, uh, no Los Angeles gladiators, they do have academy teams, and then you got some teams that are, not run by big name or organizations. Um, I think um, I, I, Envy is, I think Envious, um, who own the Dallas Fuel, um, they do have, you know, they have a branded um, Overwatch team under Envy. Um, yeah, Mind Dallas Freak, I, Mind Freak has a team. I think those are the only two kind of orgs like, I really know about. The rest of them are kind of really small. Like, they're really small orgs. Like, they don't have big sponsors. Yeah. And I, you know, just say it's going to be 12 or 16 well, spots. Well, yeah, because a lot of these, a lot of the Overwatch teams, they're not owned by orgs. They're owned by, like, it's the Boston Overwatch team is owned by, like, the Patriots owner. Something like that. Which is kind of cool. Let's go. Yeah, that was kind of one thing I want to talk about, like... The thing, okay, so we're going to get, this is probably going to be the rest of the show right here. This is kind of the franchising topic because this is going to be the problem with everything overall. Just kind of with the city spread. I really did not understand the decision for Paris. Um, because the Paris did not, does not have a big, I'm going to be honest here. Paris does not have the talent of players. Yeah. Um... You know, we were shocked when Overtime uh, slash Denaro roster made it into the Pro League and beat Mind Freak. That's your only talent. That's your only talent. You have no one else you can kind of invest in. Um, in the talent market of Paris. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're going to have a franchise team there, the first thing, there's not going to be a lot of leagues. What You're going to be probably one of the worst teams in the division. I, maybe Overwatch is different. Because I just say, example, Vancouver Titans, they have all um, Korean players, you know. Alright, yeah. and do you think that's how the CDL is going to be? Is you have, to, you think it's going to be like you can be from anywhere and play for a certain region, or you think you're going to have to be like, oh, like the Paris team, you have to be French to play? Uh, I wouldn't think so. I would give. It, I think a lot of teams have are Korean based, but again, that was. Um, like, they only have a Korean team. They don't, well, again, they don't have any official city, like, they don't play in, like, cities yet. Like, you know, they don't have a yeah. home arena that they have to travel in. It's just, it's just a right. name. I think BP um, may have and, out. Oh, uh, you can bite them. When you, when you, um, but, it's just, you, s I just can't, it's too hard. Because, I don't think people want to, if they're gonna do that in the first year of the franchise league, yeah. where they're gonna um, kind of 
have them move so they can represent their region, it's going to be awful. First thing, you're going to be at disadvantage against the NA competition, which a lot of teams are going to be dominated by, you know. Um, just, you know, half the teams are going to be in the West Coast a lot of times. Um, a lot of the players live in the West Coast and all over uh, North America. There's going to be a disadvantage for those teams to just say Madrid. Um, if Heretics or G2 do invest in it. Um, Paris, which is already on. You know, London, that's going to be a big disadvantage. Um, just... Yeah, same here. Oh, so you haven't... Oh, so you haven't... No, 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 we heard, we, heard, we heard everything up to, into um, what you said about London. Oh, okay. Um, this just kind of from there. Just kind of the London's, you know, what are these big name international cities do they want to invest? And that's the, that's just kind of, if they do have the little location sets they play in arenas, that's gonna be a big concern. It's to be honest, I think the smart thing they would have done is just to keep the org names, just keep it straight yeah. there. Yeah, I I don't know. I'd rather have that, but I know they're gonna they're gonna switch them up. Yeah, it's just fortunate that you sad. don't get to hear the name Optic Gaming anymore. It's just gonna be LA. I, I don't know what they're gonna come up with. You're not yeah. gonna hear Face Clan anymore. You, you know, you're not gonna hear Hunter Deeves, United. Um, you know these Envy, Luminat. Well, Envy already has a spot. Same as Splice. But you're not going to hear those names that people have been saying for years in the Call yeah. of Duty scene, and that just sucks. A lot of broken hearts for the OGs have been watching for so long, you know? Yeah, I know. I'm kind of upset about that. Because I, I, I want to hear, like, oh, Optic Gaming this, Optic Gaming that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that was when they announced that it was going to be city-based, they noticed that the Optic... Again, that's the problem with the League. They don't... They only, I think a lot of times, people only watch Optic, and that right, has right. been a concern, because you haven't... Optic, I think... I'm going to be honest... I don't know, I'm going to be honest here. I think Optic is the biggest org in the studio. With, they have the most money. Maybe Gen... You know, we go Gen G, 100 Deep's the case, but again... This is like just money, like money-wise, um, fanship-wise. They don't compare to you know your phases, or, like just beyond history with your phases or hundred thieves. It's just unfortunate we don't get to hear that name again. Yeah. I don't know. I want to try and because also like, are we still going to be able to get optic gaming merch anymore? Or no, you know, or is it just going to be like? At least something merge now. Imagine with team months dipping and it's gonna well it's Well, you got an OG shirt you well, know, you got a really uh collectible item shirt, so it's you know, it's yeah. whatever. Especially when they sh they have to shut down and all that. Kind of one uh, it's, I don't know. I think one other kind of topic this I don't know. It's just coming up this morning because it's kind of like free ball, free ball. Um, trying to come up with topics a lot of times, uh, based on the problems with the CWL. Kind of, the just the EU. I think the EU scene. Um. Yeah. It's really weak. And you don't. It's just, just a disadvantage, and with the other regions, and especially with franchises coming next year. Do you get? Do we get to see kind of those EU talents rise to the occasion? I definitely I think so. I think with franchising, we're gonna get it out, out way more EU players and way more EU teams coming out. I think especially it will help for the one like those EU spots if they you know London, Madrid, those Spanish players, Paris, you know they have you know Berlin, Frankfurt, well Berlin, Amsterdam if they. Amsterdam, I, uh, yeah, it might be a long shot. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. Italian players on the scene. Um, they could be more interested in it, um, especially if they. I think, especially if they have more UK teams, like team, 
Uh, send you guys an invite. Uh, send, uh... Um, you have more, like, EU teams invested in it, but that's the thing. It's gonna be hard. And also, the sponsorship's gonna be hard for the league overall. Again, there's no governing body for these leagues. So, it could... Hard to get sponsors. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm no, I'm excited for next year. I think it's gonna be interesting. I, I'm excited for this. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for. I'm excited for the new COD. It's gonna be different. I think this is. I think this is a good COD to come out with franchising because it's you know it's, com it's almost completely different from the new CODs or all the older CODs. Like people can say all the time, like oh, like. Oh, this is nothing like the old CODs, but Modern Warfare is going to really be nothing like the older COD games. I, it's going to yeah, be because... no mini-map. There's going to be drop-off for shots. Um, predictive recoil, like what we have in this game. Um, A lot of more skill-based, like, attributes yeah, it's gonna be, the game. It's going to be skill-based now, which is exciting. Yeah, that's going to kind of... I, well, we gotta see how the first couple of days go. We'll see if if it's an easy game to grasp onto early, or you know whatever. I it's gonna, definitely it's feel like gonna the be game really is easy to grasp the game onto. is going to be super hard for for people. Like for I think I think what they're trying to do is make the game for like not n like normies, but like. People who don't play the game as much, maybe. Um, like, they don't play competitively, they just play for fun. I think it's gonna try, it's gonna, the new game's gonna merge the, merge those two different categories. You know, those who play for fun and those who play competitively. I think it's gonna, it's gonna be like, like, I, I hate to bring up Overwatch, but I, I really feel like that's what it's gonna be like. I think it's because that's that's what Overwatch is. Even if you're someone who doesn't play uh, Overwatch that much, you still, you know, you're still like, you play competitive. You know, that's like the main game mode is comp. And I really hope that's what it's going to be like next year, and I think it's going to bring out a lot more talent. Well, that's Good hopefully point. the case. Um, just I think one topic. Oh, I guess very much. Um, just there's been rumors of a amateur circuit really? coming into play. Um, so it's so they, you know, besides the franchise leagues, they have their own separate thing. They think about doing amateur circuits, uh, for different cities, different like. So that's been a big thing. If they have those amateur circuits, um, he, yeah, I don't think they would have a contenders league like Overwatch. I'm gonna be honest there. I don't think they will do that. Yeah. It could, you know, that we don't know, sucks, you know, it could happen, but I'm not gonna fully count it that huh, that much. But I think if those amateur circuits do blow up, you know, that's where you get the training grounds. You get the, all those amateurs. That's the problem with the league this year. I think this year is you don't, they don't invest the best talent in Black Ops Four. They go for loyalty. Mm -hmm. And I just don't get why Aches, you know, players like Aches, J Cap, I, I, yeah, I know J Cap's doing ass this year. Um, I'm gonna even Nagafin sometimes. Yeah. Why are they still on rosters? I know, I know they have the veteran experience, but they don't have the talent to play keep up with to the help new, your new team kids. win if they're just hard negative. Like Aches, yeah, especially needs faster to go. Than those new towns. Aches needs to go. I definitely think there needs to be players, maybe like, like Aches, like you know, like those veterans that have like that leadership role and they like, they know how to lead a team. I definitely think that's vital on a team. But when it gets to a point where, like Aches, he has his moments, obviously, and Aches, like I'm not a big fan of Aches, but obviously he's, you know, he's one of the greatest players of all time, two-time world champ, but no one. Like, no one thought he was going to win last year, and he, somehow, he did it. He, it's like, That he, was Envy's mistake. Yeah. I, I don't know. 
it's like it comes to a point where you got to be like, well, maybe we should we should look for a veteran who's better than that. Even if like even if they don't have as much experience as Ix, you know, it would be worth it if it can get you to that next level. Yeah, I think it's just I don't consider him a community. I just I never see. Like, I know you might have a lot of community, like, you know, you got a lot of brain in there, but if you can't produce the talent, I really, I know leadership is going to be important, and, but next year when you see that struggle, they don't give a shit. They honestly don't give a shit if you go, if you're, you're, you have the best communication on point, but you don't perform, you're getting dropped. That's the thing with general manager role. Yeah. And that's what's going to be invested in. They, there's, there's no such thing as, oh. Oh, he got experience. No, oh, he's a he got you know you know we I think we trust a veteran more than some guy who's on the cup and come. You know we can develop him easier. You know you're not performing, you're not performing. That that that's kind of just really hate about this year. Just seeing teams struggle more and more. I think I say as John. I'm gonna be honest here. I don't think I like John as a player. I know he got the SMG town, but I just, yeah. I this year he can't. Been he doesn't have leadership skills. He doesn't have leadership skills. There's also the, like, there's just like, there's also, there's, you gotta consider those players that like, at the end of the year, that's, that's when they're their best. Like, John is one of those players, but I think for franchising next year, that's not gonna cut it. I think they're gonna have it more, like, if your team doesn't qualify, like, you don't get to play, so they're gonna... They're gonna need those players who not just show up in the beginning of the and at the end of the year. They're gonna need those players that are good from the beginning all the way to the end. And that's yeah, just that's what teams are gonna need. I probably there's a twenty. There's like maybe fifty other players that are better than X on amateur circuit. That's their chance. Maybe the whole my freak roster could replace <laughs> Envy. Um, well, besides Gunless at the moment, but. Again. And we obviously silly. It. We love Justin Fargo. Mm. Huh. Yeah, he, I didn't like that. That was an interesting tattoo we just got. Yeah, um, I'm not a big fan. Besides him, but just again, it's just this is this is why the amateur circuit. This is why people don't want to play. This is why a lot of these guys don't want to be on the amateur circuit that long because of these veterans who think they're the hot thing oh you can't drop me you know who just ha take control over the owner like you know who yeah, the general like manager of the COD shit. team is for yeah they just they think you know it's hard to drop we can drop if i was the or league i was an org owner i wouldn't give a shit if you're experienced or not you're not performing you're out yeah like clay i would even i would if crimson was dropping a 0 0.5 i would legitly drop him i don't care well yeah but that, i but know also, people are not gonna gotta... like it but you gotta think, KD isn't go. everything this year. Actually, KD's never been everything. Well, what yeah. what matters most, like, you gotta, you, you know, if you watch back games, you gotta see, like, what that player is doing. Because, like, someone can drop a 2.0 KD, and if their team's still losing, like, watch that player on the map. They're, you know, they're probably just playing for kills. Because that's, that's all anyone cares about nowadays, is purely... Yeah, but... Red Dot Chasing. Yeah, the red dot chasing basically, and it's 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 just not fair to like those players like like when take an example like Beanie Pooh and I, I he always he drops way more kills than I do, but I'm also you know that's his role. He's Slayer. I'm Entry Sog. Like that's just yeah, how that the game that's how the game works. But if you got like that player that's you know they that are known yeah ace. not known but they're supposed to drop those numbers then and they're not and then that's when it starts to become a problem yeah it's different for Angie Slayer but again John I, I don't know if he's really I haven't really watched the minimap a lot but, or like watch who's going in first but I don't know if John's really entry Slayer this year um if he was maybe I'll give him some slack but again you still have to you gotta be like priest who can shit on anyone, even as an entry slayer or an able yeah. mark. Well, you know who's that good entry slayer, and that's the problem is that costs a lot of teams just because they have to get uncomfortable. 
But again, Ace is not an entry slayer. He's supposed to be picking up kills somewhere else. Or he's... I don't know. If, you know, maybe he's shot calling, but the shot calling's not doing right. See, that's a problem. Yeah. You're right there, sorry. You gotta get those players that... That are, you know... That are willing to... Willing to put in the work. Even if, like... I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's because sometimes yeah. a lack of effort in the league too. Um, especially in these last two weeks, I felt like there was just a lack of effort from, especially Phase. I think mean, Phase maybe hundred deep. Well, I don't know about hundred. You know, Optic they did not show up, and that was kind of disappointing. It was just. It's just such a lack of. I think it's just this year, it's just kind of a lack of effort by a lot of teams that you expect to do good. They don't want to improve. They just want. They you know. They don't want to fix issues. They just wait till, you know, they get a. They get some drama along them. Yeah. And that's the problem. I don't. Know, but if we're talking about the biggest problem in the CWL, and honestly, I think this is the biggest problem is the age limit. That is probably the biggest problem in the CWL. At the yeah, moment, I think... since since you know uh, since Black Ops Three, I think that's the dumbest decision that MO like or not even MOG that that you know Activision made. Because you know in Halo and other esports, you I think you just have to be 16 to play, and we have all these great players like like Hook and Hook and um Tom. and Temp they. They couldn't play for a year because, um, uh, because the TJ age was another TJ. TJ too. Uh, Sim. TJ. Ellie. Well, well, these are all players well, that. Coming next, Ellie's coming in um, next year. Or Shotzi. So that's that's another news, one. All well, these amazing I players. Give shots. I know I want to. Shotzi's been a hyped amateur because of his Halo experience, but I. I again, we. I don't know, it's just kind of, he's going to be a hard name to kind of really pursue people. I don't know, um, if you get, like if, you get temp, if you get Temp, Hook, Shotzi on a team, that's a championship contending team. You can go to Illy too. In, uh, yeah, imagine, a lot of, <laughs> imagine like, Hook, Temp, Illy, and like Selium or Shotzi, something like that. Just like a com combination of those six players, that would team would win. Yeah, I think that's just kind of the problem is you're gonna have a lot it's just they wish they can compete but they can't. They sometimes they do, they're just online players. Um they don't want to they you know, they and you know, I didn't go to lands and all that, but they're not big, they're not they didn't you know, maybe you can win a land, but the, those are not the toughest competition. They want to you know, it's gonna be hard to get a name on there unless you're in a search and destroy community and that's the problem is you can only get hurt. Your your name gets called a lot if you're in the search and destroy community, like Simp and Selium were. Um, yeah. And again, the search and destroy community has been slacking these last couple of years. So that was, that's the problem. Is once they heard those age limits, a lot just it just dropped down. Where you don't see a lot of these up and coming players. Like I think Illy is the last one. Well, yeah, I don't Illy, know if we have Illy any sixteen. Are, like I think are the last two AMs that are. Hyped how like how they are, they're the last two M's that are like that. Yeah, it's um, just sucks. Cause like you know it it was like Simp, Selium, Shotzi, you know who can temp before they got into the league, and and all these um, just really good players they were all hyped up, and then they put the age limit and you know nothing. Shotzi and, was I no Shotzi. W Got into COD this year because of they dropped the the Splice Halo roster. I don't I don't think it was in the past, but I know I know Illy was really known in Black Ops Three. I think same thing as Dashy, um, yeah, Dashy and Blast Dashy. and Pharaoh. I don't know. It's just um, Decimate was my name. Yep. But it's just I don't know. Just kind of I really don't know any sixteen or fifteen year olds who. 
you know, with this age limit, have a chance of compete. You know, you know, have to hype think, around them. I think the only other one. Wait, Shotzi in, might actually participate in this tournament, um, in Miami as an open bracket. Really? Oh, really? Did he just? Yeah, because he's 18. I think he's 18. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, but well, I, anyway, I don't know if he is. I, I think the I, only. I think he is or not. Wait, I think the the only sorry I just the only other one, the only 15 16 year old I know that has any type of hype around him at all is um his name is Zealot Zealot it's a lot Zealot something like that. I played against him at a LAN. He's insane and he has like 20k earnings on CMG. He's a really good player. I know he's definitely gonna go into the league one Wait, day. How do you s Wait, you know how to spell it? Um, I never, I didn't never heard of the name before. You you don't know who he is? I uh, know he spelled. It. No, I don't. No, I'm gonna be honest. I don't, like if he, I don't know. Maybe if he sp it's like you spell. I don't know. Not really. <laughs> he he's young. He's he's really good though. He's. I played against him in Lance and he smoked me. But he plays with, like Illy and stuff, and he plays in like big wager matches with them. He's just in in. Is it SMK. Z E L O? Uh yeah. Is like it? That. Uh, that's fine. Guess I was right. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's kind of rude. I think one player I wanted to see come up into the scene. I think that's been Onyx. Who? Um. Andrew Onyx, or mm. I, he's he's kind of a really known search and destroy player too, but he's he has Wait. competed in a couple tournaments. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously there's still kids that are extremely hyped up, just like not to the level that you know Simp, Illy, Selium, and and them were, not to that level. A lot. Again, we might we like, might know a like, twelve year old who's that good. If you if you watch um if you just like watch wager matches and you like CMG like you know who these players are but otherwise not really like I didn't even know wagers I just I didn't even a couple years ago I didn't even know what like what wagers were really but I still knew who Simp and Illy were because they compete a lot of those they won a lot of tournaments because so. you know because you know the pro players play with them. <laughs> And just like yeah, the pro players play with them, and you know I get the, you know they're getting retweeted, you know getting picked up by um what it was it? they're picked up by the United something team right? Cadets. Yeah, the United there was one Cadets of, team. There was another player. Turn up too um turn up too easy. That was another player. Uh, that was on the Cadet roster, but he then he didn't grow as fast as you know, like Slump or selling him what he got automatically put into pro league rosters. Yeah, cause wait, what was his name? Turn up too easy. I think that was another name. Uh, he just he turned 18. He's on the Spire Esport. That um. Who who was it? It was it was Simp. It was Simp Illy. Um, selling him and and turn up too easy. They were the yeah, tier four, and they, they got popular after, you know, what was it? Beating Black Optic. So they beat Optic in a World War Two, like GB or something, and everyone was like, "Well, wow, like, yeah, these guys are the shit." I think that's when yeah, think they really popped off. I think people do understand. I think they're. They, you know, you could see those age limits where you, it could help people who are, you know, just saying, okay, I, I may have to go to college, but if I'm that good of a video game, I want to compete. But the problem is you can't compete if you're barely making money at 18, yeah. you know, unless you're 18 that, and you're, you know, you're selling that, That's, stuff. that's but, the problem. It's either you're a god at wagers and you play at least like, if you're playing like five wagers a night. Maybe that's how you can make money, and they have to be like high rolling wagers, like a hundred dollars or something. Like that's like the only way that you're able to support yourself, and that's where the age limit deters these players. Cause after a while, they're like, yeah, like I'm, you know, I have to, I have to, you know, I have to think about my future. So they can't just focus on COD. 
And then, yeah, but and if, just if, 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 you, if there was no age limit, it's like, okay, I'm 16, don't have to worry about college yet. Don't have to worry about anything, really, because I'm not an adult. I can play COD, get known more, and then when they do turn 18, they're like, okay, I'm like, I'm on a good org. I'm, I'm pretty much set for, I'm set for now. Yeah, that's, um, I think the re there's a reason they want to do it because they want to keep it so it's like mature i think well actually the m status is 17. for them like how yeah, to call it yeah and, but they make because it because they want to be like size of the doll um oh my god i can't use a sog um but again it's just thing is it's just gonna be kind of if they did that a lot earlier now it's just a little bit too late you know people are not really kind of pers like really trying for that anymore because you know what there's n well you, you can you do have 19 year olds who don't how to do community college and that's probably community college or maybe a small time university they do still play cod or yeah, yeah. and it's not like it's not like you school. can't play cod anymore if you go to college like you you can do it it's just that it's a limitation if, if you're gonna do that, that if you're gonna yeah. do that you have to be You've got you've got to this time managed so well, like, cause also you gotta like you gotta live your life. You know you can't just school and a game. You know you gotta you gotta balance it out. And I think that's maybe where the problem is. Where like in high school, it's not really a big worry. Yeah, and then that's the eighteen limit just. You know, there's a lot more free time in high school where you can probably play and all that, but it's just, it doesn't happen. And also, I think, one, they do have College Call of Duty. Now, that problem with that College Call of Duty, I think, especially, I think, with College Call of Duty, you know, with these esports um, going to colleges now, giving out scholarships, this could be a lifesaver, especially if you do, you know, you also, if you, um, they should pursue players in the college COD scene, you know, they have a league for that. You can, you have a degree with you, you do have scholarships with you, you know, they do hand out scholarships, you have, you know, they do pursue a degree, you know, you got four, you, you know, trust with college COD, um, but also you have a chance to compete at a big orc, so you make money, you can make money anytime, you know, it's not like these call, these call of duty players who have, you know, maybe besides Slasher with Robotics degree, you ha even if you don't pan out in the, you know, in the pro call of duty scene, at least you have a backup career where you're not stuck, you know, you're fucked. Like, yeah. I think one player that was drama, I think it was drama, he didn't have any money with him. He was, um, his parents kicked him out of my house because he didn't make enough money. If he was, um, and the problem is the college cod scene came out a little bit late. But they kicked him out of his house, he didn't have a job, he didn't want to get a job. Um, you know, that's the thing, it's just, he, they j I don't know, it's just messed up. Overall. Yeah, I think... Cause I know there's like a couple players that have like business degrees and stuff, like you said, slashers the slasher robotics. Like the, yeah, the robotics. Yeah, that's the only one that comes to mind actually. So he has a backup. Plan. So he has a backup in case you know, just say next year has a shitty year. Maybe he has some unfortunate injury. You know, doesn't have opportunity to come back. He has a backup, and that was, you know, he was smart enough to do that. And a lot of these cod players today. They don't. They they got luck. They are lucky. They're still in the scene, getting paid a lot, but they're mm -hmm. not getting paid enough. Like these old watch League of Legends players, CS:GO. Yeah. Unless you're like all that is on just... op Unless you're like, I guess you're like on optic phase, hundred thieves, and like these big contracts. And like Gen G, you don't have like that big of a contract. Like awesome. I think it's like yeah, it's... the optic boys they make like. Or like NV too. The Optic Boys make like I think it's like twenty five um twenty five thousand a month. Which is which is like ridiculous when I think about that. And it's like the contracts are too small. 
and that's the problem is because of those orgs not well we could have probably talked about this like three minutes ago but all these orgs not paying life-saving contracts you're gonna have to depend yeah. you know they just you have paid four thousand dollars per month that's not enough that's was it 48k per well actually you might be getting paid a little bit more because i think you got 500 bucks per i think you got your team got 2500 bucks per win this year so you got every time you won the player got paid 500 bucks which you know that does help but again if you like a shitty team you're not getting paid a lot also um i was trying to say it's just the lack of it just the lack you know you're not gonna have trust i think or it's not trusting it to kai just hinders the scene and they know that a lot of these up and coming players know oh shit i don't know how i'm gonna i i don't i don't have a big stream populace like teddy rex yeah. um you know oh i gotta pray to god i get lucky with a you know you know that's just a problem is with these small orcs the best thing um these amateur orcs it's not enough um overall I think that, but I think that's a good thing about fran. That's a, a positive about franchising is, you know, now you know you are going to have like these bigger orgs legally bonded to play these players a certain amount. So we're not going to have another red reserve situation or an elevate situation or not elevate a exg situation Sorry. where players aren't getting paid. It's gonna people are definitely getting paid their money. Yeah, I kind of talked about this on the last, um, the first show where I talked about organizations not, you got to focus on funding first and I don't know if people really want to pay those that 25 million. Well, again, this is a good thing. If they have this franchise league, it probably gives a lot more dedication. But again, the amateur scene, we don't know how shady that business is going to be, um, yeah. with not paying players, um, also, like, if you're thinking about this, like if you're gonna franchise this year, you're probably getting paid maybe a, a two two hundred thousand dollar a year a salary contract. That was like like that's a lot of money just to kinda of save up again, maybe. Yeah. That's how you spend it. Well, like for especially for like playing video games, like that's that's really worth it. Yeah, but they could have probably done it a couple years ago. I think they did it a couple more years ago, a couple years ago, but the franchising, you know, there'll be a lot more pursuit from these amateur cop players to keep playing because you know, you get bigger and bigger contracts every time. So you want to escape the amateur scene. Yeah. And you know, you know it's it's happened. And you, well, the thing is also you, know, you got if you do make the you kind of got to make it in the AM scene to get into the CDL or CDL now yeah especially with the lack of I think one thing I also would want to mention earlier but I forgot just the lack of tournaments this year lack of open tournaments so we have one two I'm gonna say three well I'm gonna say three because I don't want to count Las Vegas um, because they got mixed in but just free tournaments uh, for the open scene um, which they were mixed up with the big event. Uh, it was a 75k prize pool. I think that's a little bit small. Um, the winner got 15k. That is not a free. So that's every player got enough. 3,000. That's so not between enough. that's only 3k per well, player. Well, and you don't again, even you know how how much the, the you don't even know how much the orgs are taking out of you know. That if, even if you got first, how much money are this orcs taking out? You know. Well, yeah, you can count Mind Freak twice. Again, Mind Freak's more established, so it's not really a concern. But just maybe look at. Well, also, maybe like, Mind Freak, if, they're they're playing, they're they're paying their players. I'm pretty sure. Even though they're an, you know an AM team, they're still paying them. So I'm sure they. Do you think, cause do you think Mind Freak's gonna have the money to go in next year? Yes. So... No. You know, well, they have a contenders team, but... No. No, you don't think they will? May, it may, I don't know, it matters if they if, if they decide on that. But we don't, again, we don't know how many spots open. If there's 12 spots, hell no. 
We are not seeing an Australian team. Maybe if we see 16, yes, we are. It just matters on how many... You know, I think people can invest. The problem with Australia is it's been a disadvantage this whole time. Yeah, the um, server. None of these Australian teams have looked good. Besides, maybe besides Mind Freak. Um, just, I think Mind Freak's the only successful uh, um, Australian team. You know, when you talk about Europe, they have a couple of them that have success in means, you know, maybe Splice in the past, Red Reserve. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, maybe T. Really, really old uh, Europe orgs. I don't know Epsilon back in the day. Yeah. The, like you had those. They had they had developed teams that really succeeded for just a year or so. Mind Freak. They had never really had good results overall. Just, just, just because of the isolation, and that's the problem. That's why with these cities, it's just not gonna work. Now, one thing, uh, so we're gonna get ending near the stream here. So, kind of one thing we kind of we're doing a little, we did some at the end of the stream. I did the last thing, but we kind of talk. I kind of give you guys a topic that is not mentioned on, you know, the main topic. Mm -hmm. What? And since Call of Duty, um, Modern Warfare showed gameplay two days ago. Yeah, two days ago. Yeah. Yeah. What is one map you kind of want to, you know, one map that, okay, this is going to be an interesting question because we're not going to do any, one map you want to see back that hasn't bought, hasn't been brought back into any other COD. So it has to be a map. Damn. Um, that's a good So it question. can't be high, it can't be high rise, it can't be a uh, rust variant because I think rust had a couple. Uh, variants in IW, I think. Yeah. Um. So, so I, I can't be. I can't be high rise. It can't be. Um. I think Scrapyard had in Ghosts. If you can think of any map. Mm. You know. Like, does it have to be a Modern Warfare map? It, it, or Infinity it War be, map? It has to like, be an Infinity War series. It can okay. any game in Infinity War series. What was that map on Ghost? It was like a, it was like in a factory. You know what I'm talking oh. about? Yeah. Uh, nope. What is it called? Oh, I gotta look it up. Oh yeah, it was like in a factory, and it was part. I don't know. That's the map I would want to see back, because it's a relative. It's a bigger map, so I think it would work. For, I think it would still work for five v five. I actually have all the maps names on here. Uh, is it Freight? Uh, what is it? Uh, Freight, it was... It was a kind of factory map. Oh, you want... Okay, Sovereign... Okay, one of the maps... Um... Sovereign was the tank assembly plan. Yeah, that one. Like Sovereign. It I was in, I didn't yeah I remember I keep either it, that, that was, or Warhawk, D Warhawk or, or Warhawk. I think Warhawk had a variant. Um, but I think yeah, Sovereigns. I think really underrated map. It worked for all ranges. Um, like just it was a kind of a really more close quarter map. Or yeah, it, it worked for every range. It was. So because you could really... use, because also the guns in Ghost were also just very good. Yeah, that's kind of what's good thing about. Uh, like, like the, Beanie, yeah, any like map you want back? Um, I don't know if like. Uh, I feel like it, there should be a map that come back from fuck uh MW two scene, or maybe even um. You know, uh, one of the OG games that everybody liked and everyone would like to see back that they haven't seen back before. But I'm not sure, like, um, if any of the maps in mind that I would have would be good for um, competitive. Like, maybe, like, um... It do no, it, it doesn't really have to be competitive. I, I know, well, we're gonna... Probably the map's gonna be introduced in game. Uh, probably gonna be more based on competitive. Right. Um... um... 
I mean, just that, like it can work in casual day. too. I mean, casual. I mean, like I would like to see. It might sound like as worse as it sounds, but like back in my day, you know, those one v one Rust battles, man. Imagine, imagine they bring back Rust, bro. You know how much hype that I, I mean, I would have, like, you know, just with like, back with like update, memories from updated the, graphics yeah, and stuff. Yeah, imagine, dude, imagine that. Like, this Rust, be awesome. you know, obviously for casual, but like, you know, just bring back that 1v1, snipers only, what everybody liked back in the day when MW2 came out, man. That's where everything happened, everything went down. I think that would be amazing, it's everything, um, just to come back and re- uh, reconstructed, it'd be great. Yeah, with the, with the new graphics, you know, the updated right. weapons. Rust was, I think, featured in AW as a DLC map, but I think oh, you, if they're gonna include great. Rust, I think it would be an interesting, like, uh, gunfight map, a uh, 2v2 map. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, because they I have think a new, they if have they new were gonna do that, mode. if they, I think, if they were, wow, this one crack. If this, they were gonna do that, they were gonna do it in a 2v2 fashion. I think, um, yeah, definitely. I know exactly. I think it could about. work. Um, I don't know. Like that, I think it works best on that. But again, I think it won't work for that map that good. Um, because of how how many hidden spots there are on the map. Just, just I don't know. It's a lot of high ground. I don't think it'll work. But right. Maybe it'll be, maybe we do see Rust back. Uh. Trying to, trying you think they'll uh, uh, make MW2 remastered? Kind of like how they did with Infinity or no? Infinite Warfare? Think, they do you, you don't think it's gonna happen, dude? I I don't even know. Like I, with the, with the new engine, I think that would be awesome. A great way to update the remaster the game on like the new engine. I think uh, that would be a really good selling idea for. Maybe. Did you see the little Easter egg on Captain Price's shirt when it right. had like a little two oh, next? Oh, jeez. <laughs> There's a little like leak. Obviously, it was probably a joke, but like on um, they had uh Captain Price in the uh the game front, and it said like Modern Warfare, and his little sleeve had a little two on it. It's like you know maybe just uh obviously joking about it, but um if it were to come back. Yeah, that would be really, really cool. And I honestly, I I don't even, I wouldn't even care if it came out like in March or something. And they don't have to bring it back the same, you know, launch it the same day they launch Modern Warfare. Yeah, that was a that was a horrible idea, dude. Yeah, right. Well, they didn't. I well, just right. I do. I think it was a horrible idea. Um. Uh, actually, it, it kind of did work, especially for how bad Infinite, uh, Infinite Warfare was. But yeah, as much shit as Infinite Warfare gets, it was a really good competitive game. Maybe not so much for pubs, but competitively, that game was really good. Definitely um, the best I, competitive I game of the jetpacks. Mm. Um, I think one map I do want to this. I don't know if they did this in any other cut. Skid Row. Oh yeah. Yeah, I yeah. I never. So I never reason, wait, what game is uh, that from? MW2. Yeah, yeah I never. I didn't play. It MW2. was <laughs> especially the bottom. You know, like you know the bomb. You know, being like the bomb floor and then the hallway. Yeah. Like the hallway. I know, you know exactly this, what you're yeah, talking those about. Those were like hell. It was. Uh, the B, oh my god, that B point was just interesting. Because <laughs> you're right in the middle, like... Where I'm sitting, okay. They can switch, I think the problem with the B point, it was it was on the, you know, it was the second floor. Where I'm sitting, right. did it right in that basement level. You know, where the, you know, that the garage is, you know, the main, like, the bomb floor of that main building. Um, if they did, it, imagine if they did that as a dom, you know, it just as a dom point. Or like a hard point, like, you know, point on a hard point. There's yeah. no cover in there. It is gonna be like war. I, I think it, that would be interesting. If they, that brought that map back. Uh, also, kind of one. Did you see uh, the game modes they were gonna? They people were saying they're gonna bring into the game. They said they're gonna have five game modes next year. 
I I don't like the I I'm gonna be honest here. I don't really like the idea. Yeah, yeah you know it just um, doesn't. I feel I, I, I think you're it. fine with free. I'm down for four game modes and and make it best of seven, but not not five game modes. <laughs> <laughs> not five game. Yeah, not not best of like dom use. dom hardpoint S and D C T F. That would be perfect. That'd be perfect for the competitive scene. I think. I know Dom's kind of boring to watch, but that game is like that's probably the most oh, they play heavy and... game mode. Well, they stopped in, uh, after Ghost. They kind of stopped it, yeah, um, because of hard point. Um, one, this might be a shocker to a lot of people. I I think for you guys um, was Blitz. Blitz from Ghost. Oh yeah, they they were talking about having S like, the reverse CTF. That does I don't get that. It's it's literally I... just it's literally blitz, but instead of uh instead of it being like you have to go to their capture point or whatever, you you have to bring your flag to their base. So, yeah, which so I, which is yeah, interesting, I'm excited to see that blitz. game mode, but I don't think that should be in the competitive rotation. I think it'd be fun to play though. Or actually, I think another game mode that um, I think Crows mentioned in the past and War Two Gridiron, it was like uplink on the like. Oh yeah, on the oh yeah. Ground. I don't, I don't think I personally don't really like. Gridlock was a shit ton or whatever. What was it called? It was Gridiron. Grid, uh, or... Gridiron. It's fun, but it's it's uplink on on boots is so different. It, it's. I guess you could kind of say that's what the reverse CTF is. It's it's uplink, basically. Actually, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Well, yeah, I guess so because if you're, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. It's you have to bring your flag to their base, but it's instead of it being one point, you each have one flag to bring to their base. Uh, I don't know, it just doesn't work out. I think I, 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 I don't know, it just doesn't really fascinate to me. But there were, like, I think Blitz, I think, I don't know, CTL just feels hot because of the spawns. I think if they can get, like, you know, if they can get the spawning system right in CTF, it could work. Otherwise, I, I don't know, it's just, it's been the on and off game on. Because yeah. he didn't have CTF this year with control, but I th oh that's <laughs> I've been go back to problems to the CWL. I know you wanna end the stream soon, but the the dice have two more we problems. Can go on it. Um, oh yeah, actually we can continue. That doesn't matter. Yeah, th keep us on that one thing control. If you are on, if you're on um, attack first, you're at a disadvantage immediately. Because you have to, because if it goes to round 5, you have to attack again, you know? I think what they should have done, is if it goes to round 5, they, it's like, almost like the game mode switches, right? Um, where, like, it's almost like there's one collective control point, it's almost like a hard, it's almost like hard point, It's but it's like one spot that the team, both teams have to capture, you know? It's like a game. It, uh, oh, it's kind of like a game nice. mode in in um in Halo that, but it's like you have to hold this ball and you have to get a certain amount of points. I think that'd be that could be something really cool they could have done. Just a central point, have to get a hundred seconds and your team wins. That would be, I think that'd be a great way to finish off control for like a round five instead of it being if it goes to round five, one team has to attack three times because defending statistically is easier on control than. Attacking is. Now you're on that part. Um, that'll probably be the last game. We can continue to talk about. It's probably the last game plan. Um, I just, I don't know. It's just, I think the end of the story is, the league will have to, if just say that this cut sucks. Give you a hypothetical answer. This is going to be the hard part about going for the next couple of years. Um, it, it, I do kind of like the ever-changing games because the other two leagues don't have what well, we don't. 
don't have it. I don't know. I think it said Overwatch probably gonna release a new game, but I don't know. It's just kind of bland, looking for the same thing. I think same for every competitive game. You know, it's just one game. You don't have variants. Call of Duty is one of those games that have variants. Um, but the problem is there could. It it does work. I think because you don't have to see the same crap over. It's diversity. The problem is if this COD sucks, I don't know how long the franchise league will last. Yeah. I uh, and you're that's... completely right. That's the sc- that's kind of scary. If people don't like this COD, then that's probably the end of competitive. Probably most likely going to be the end of competitive Call of Duty. I I wouldn't say that word. I I I I'm I. We just, I wouldn't say the end of it. I don't think it's have. I think till they stop releasing games. No, they won't stop releasing they, games. No. I think, I think the competitive Downfall. season would be so small. Well, we just, again, you look at the last, especially with the gaming. Well, I'm supposed to be talking about a different show, but just with gaming especially going from black ops to every but that's when everybody started to watch competitive because that was i think black ops 2 competitively i think that was really exciting just seeing these youngs just kind of seeing these players just play they had really longer series um you know it was very exciting you saw really dominant teams now you go to now well, besides having the Optic Dynasty, maybe a couple of years ago, I don't. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna be honest. Hunter Deep is not gonna start a dynasty. Yeah, because people you know, are saying Priest it's going dynasty. next year. It's I, that's it's not, not a, a dynasty, dynasty if you win two wins. That's not a dynasty. You have to stay for a couple more years. I think if they were um, to stay together for the next three years and win majority events, they'd be a dynasty. Like Optic, they most winning team in Black Ops Three. I think were they the most winning team in AW? I'm not uh, sure if they were. Yes, it was close with FaZe. Uh, I know Black Ops 2 was a mix between Freako Impact or, you know, whatever that. Right, and core cool. roster and complexity. And same, well, Ghost was all complexity and evil geniuses. Yeah. Well, slash evil geniuses. And then they. Manager, that roster stayed together, well, another year. If they didn't have those contract issues with EG. Yeah, and, I guess um, that's when they team fall but... apart. But, I think, everybody, that's what people got into COD because of Black Ops 2, because of how, you know, it, well, I think MW2 probably started, but I think once Black Ops 2, everybody was hyped up because of all the people who played it, and then the competitive scene grew from there. Especially, I think, MW3 and Black Ops, well, MW3 specifically not having the, any competitive, didn't care about it, and Black Ops 2 came up with a competitive scene, and people loved it. Like, they loved playing it. And then, you just, I, the problem is, you have, to, I think, for the scene to really succeed, if to go to franchising, you're going to need a good fan base. You're gonna need a consistent fan base that loves playing the game. And the problem is with these last. How oh, was it? Going on count. Ghost AW Black Ops Free six cards. It hasn't. You know maybe Black Ops Four. Some I don't know Black Ops Four. Maybe any of the Treyarch games did bring the series back, but none of these games have really fully brought a community back that. That was driven away during the Ghost year, Ghost and AW se- um, seasons. Yeah, I think it's just because you know, maybe it wasn't Black Ops too. They were different. Cause I know people wanted they wanted something different when AW come out, but when AW came out, the community wanted a different type of game. And then, cause, and then I think what ruined everyone's experience with, like, a new game was the variance in AW and then people who started to dislike the game so much. I think that was probably the final... Uh, that that drove, that drove away a lot of the... a lot of the casual... And players. then supply drops and then money... money oh, yeah. System. All of that. Um, just... All that nonsense. I don't know. It's just... It was just because if... All the... You know, just say you're a young kid. 
that was because of how many, how, like, you know, how non-serious, you know, I'm going to be some, like, maybe competitive scene, that was the only serious part. They had a good lead play system that kind of really kind of started to build, like, these now youngsters um, in the competitive scene because of the league play system and also kind of people like you can the only time you enjoy a game like enjoy a video game is you're playing with your friends that are close to like you know your close friends right and that was the big you know that was the big thing about black ops 2 i wish i ha i wish i didn't ever broke my black ops 2 disc as much because i would love to play that you know I I don't know how I, I broke it like three times like maybe t like three times it's jeez um but you. you know even that game even when Ghost was um you know Ghost was out people still play Black Ops too because mm -hmm. that was the game that that really brought uh, you know everybody together because you can have fun because that was a game where you could just it feels like you just have fun. It, it it doesn't feel like it's stressful. Now it's just like you try to have fun and go. You know, you trying to do some fun shit and go. So it's, it doesn't work. They they also kind of ruined the Xbox Live system with adding, especially with the Switch and next gen consoles in that time period. It kind of made it hard. It's actually the first time getting yeah, to kind of see it fucking it split the community. People that played on Xbox One, people that played on 360. Yeah, and then, then that's just the problem, and if, just say, I, I don't know, it's just, if they wait, if, I, I don't know, I'd, if they did Black Ops, no, actually, if they had a good COD, if they, I don't know, if they'd never split consoles, if they split consoles at the right COD, I think that could have been a lot better. Like, like maybe they, they had they done did, it at, like, AW instead. Yeah, I think that I think they did a year too early, and then just kind of it just kind of just ruined the like the fan base a lot. Um, another big problem just, with just Call of Duty as a whole and as the competitive scene is it's a new game every year. I think what it should be is like all three: Sledgehammer, Infinity War, and Treyarch. They should all work on one game together. And then, and then it, they just release like maybe like a new game every three years. Uh, yeah, I, don't know. I think that'd be a really good for the community. I think it would be. I mean, I wouldn't say three years. I think it would be way too much for someone to just keep com like competitively. I mean, it people would just get uh, look at CS. Look at CS go. I don't know. I didn't. I mean, look at look at CS:GO. Um, How long called... has that been a a competitive game? And people they they get more viewers than COD. And people wonder why it's it's not because it's simple. It's because of what people know. So, so you know maybe if they make one good game, then then ever I think the cock and then they just didn't release a new one every single year. People would start playing it again. I kind of run that one, but it's just I don't know. It's just but I understand Activision is money hungry. I think people like CS:GO and like you know, game Rainbow Six, League of Legends, because you can always learn something new, and that's what keeps the community driving. Because you always want to get better. Call mm -hmm. of Duty, it's just kind of it's just it's annoying. Running gun. Of, oh, it's okay, running gun. yeah, it's just that's the problem. It's not a slow tactical game, and that's why I'm, I think that's with this the new thing. Though, with, I think it's gonna be better. I think this is gonna be a ram topic. This is why probably Battlefield never like really had an esports scene. Maybe that one too. Um, I think the, if the game is more tactical, the more successful it's gonna be mm -hmm. over the years. And that's kind of where we're gonna. You have anything else we wanna add before we end the show? I think that 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 what I just said. That just and the only reason. The CDL will succeed, and also COD will succeed as a whole. It's just it needs to be 
grasping to the viewer, grasping to everybody, and it has to be like a tactical shooter. It can't be a running gun because yeah, it does right. not work a lot of times. It can't be. It got me more strategy along with it. Um, anything kind of else you kind of want to mention before we uh, end it off? No, but thank you for having any shout having outs? us on the show. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, any shout outs? You know, might as well. I know it's probably uh, not, I don't have a lot of viewers, small, but you know. It's uh, go follow me on Twitter at Aiden or at Acceptane. No space. That's pretty much and, it, though. I don't really stream. Yeah. Anything, Beanie? Um. No, dude. Thank Shops. you for ha have it on the show, dude. But shout out to my mom. Yeah. Shout out to my grandma. Shout out to my um. <laughs> my shout out to my family lineage. lineage. Shout out to lineage. AS1, the org. Sh yeah, shout out to you know? AS1. AS1, dude. Hit this guy That's up. The org. He's on management. Honestly. Big facts. Okay. He knows a lot. Guys, for our company. Yeah, no problem. Well, actually, I got it. Um, Overwatch, give him, drop me a follow, and that's going to be on the show. I don't know what the um, episode free might come out. Um, Episode free, we don't know what topic is going to be coming out on Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, probably Tuesday. Um, so, yeah. So, see you guys um, some other time. Bye.